So when we heard about the new Skylake mobile processors, we were pretty excited. After all, Nvidia has been bridging the gap between mobile and desktop graphics cards for quite some time now. So that got us thinking, how do mobile processors stack up against their desktop counterparts? What is the difference? So this is the Intel i7-6700K. It's the latest Skylake i7 processor that's designed to be a high-end gaming or consumer workstation chip. We've done a full review of this chip before, but as a quick refresher, it's got two cores, two cores, two cores, two cores. eight threads, a TDP of 91 watts, max boost clock of 4.2 gigahertz, and supports both DDR3 and DDR4 memory. Now the i7-6700HQ has the same number of cores, threads, and onboard graphics, but that's where the similarities end. The mobile chip only has a base clock speed of 2.6 gigahertz and a maximum turbo boost of 3.5 gigahertz and a TDP of just 45 watts. Now since it's a mobile processor, the turbo boost works a bit differently. When you're using all four cores, it'll only hit a maximum of 3.1 gigahertz, but with two cores, it'll hit 3.3, and with one core, 3.5 gigahertz. Now on the one hand, you might be saying to yourself, that's unfortunate that you can't hit 3.5 gigahertz with all four cores, but it's actually a smart way to help lower temperatures and still offer good single-threaded performance. And that is the biggest challenge when it comes to high-end mobile hardware, throttling. We've seen it in the past in both laptops and smartphones where it doesn't even matter if you have the fastest hardware in the world if it's being throttled down to 50% speed. So with that in mind, let's move on to our testing. You might have been wondering what these are doing here. These are two of MSI's latest and greatest gaming laptops for 2015. The GS40 Phantom and the GT72 Dominator G. They both feature the Intel i7-6700HQ processor, an NVIDIA GTX 970M graphics card, and 16 gigabytes of DDR4 memory. In addition, the GT72 has a 120 gigabyte SSD, a one terabyte hard drive for storage, and a 17 inch IPS G-Sync display. It's not just the hardware that's impressive either, it's the creature comforts. You have a full size RGB keyboard with number pad, Dyn Audio speakers that even include a mini subwoofer on the bottom, Killer Nick Ethernet, Intel Wi-Fi, and USB 3.1 Type-C. It's not all that bulky either. The laptop is less than three centimeters tall and weighs under six pounds. On to the benchmarks. We went with Cinebench R15 to compare rendering performance and Intel burn test as a worst case scenario to see if any throttling occurs. In Cinebench, we were able to hit a score of 608 across our four cores with a maximum clock speed of 3.1 gigahertz. We locked it down to a single core and got a score of 140 with a maximum clock speed of 3.5. Gigahertz. Now in comparison, our desktop i7-6700K got an average score of 920 with four cores and 180 with a single core. So unfortunately, the mobile Skylake processors still aren't quite as fast as their desktop counterparts. But do they throttle, I hear you asking? Really good hearing. Funny story, I, I actually really don't. I have terrible hearing. Well, with Intel burn test on the GT72, we hit the 88 degree thermal limit on the CPU. However, our processor stayed at 3.1 gigahertz across all four cores. And remember, this is a worst case scenario. In games, there was absolutely zero throttling on both the CPU and GPU. So it's nice to know that you get the exact performance you pay for with the GT72 laptop. And that's actually it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope this helped if you were considering a high-end gaming laptop. What do you guys think? Could you live with a gaming notebook or would you need the full power of a desktop? Leave a comment below and subscribe to the channel. Click here for some of our older videos and over here to tweet at us. You don't have to do all of those things, but you should. Consider it. Be, be a good person. All right.